What's Max Everly saying? The uh, board member for sport at Bayern Munich, newly into the job, quote, we should all be a bit ashamed today. This is not the Bayern Munich that I knew. I was surprised at the lack of stability that I found at Bayern. A lot needs to be changed. She just have said, it's not my fault. That's what she <laughs> yeah. said. Basically, I just got here. Uh, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Ali, I feel like we say this every week, it. every half week around Bayern Munich. It's like a new rock bottom, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, and heading into their classicer last weekend, some of the conversation was, and even some of our colleagues that, that we have Bundesliga coverage with, they were saying things like, you know, if you look at the numbers, it's not that bad mm. at Bayern Munich. It, look at the point totally. It's not that bad compared as to what they were doing last season and the season before. It, it, you know, it's okay. It's, it's not, look, it's not great, but it's not bad. It's terrible. <laughs> It's awful. The standard for Bayern Munich should be different, and this is embarrassing. And what you're finding, as well, is that there, is this, there was this rhetoric, again, leading into their classicer, the narrative about how, given the fact that they'd announced that Thomas Tuchel was not going to be the manager after the end of the season, that that had allowed some of the players from Bayern Munich to play with, with more freedom with more freedom to express themselves. And, and because of that, you're seeing a, a closer version to the best mm. of Bayern Munich. Nonsense. Because you, I tell you what happens. When you know that's not the boss, that's not the guy, when things get tough, guess what happens? Huh? When things get tough, a team that wasn't all that together to begin with, and now this guy is not going to be the boss, everybody scatters. Everybody scatters. So when you get punched in the face, this team doesn't come together. They scatter. Mm. They get fractured. And the fractures get deeper and deeper and deeper. And therefore, you see a team that at times has no reaction, has a whole lot of give up in them, a whole lot of quit in them. And it, it's what happened today. Heidenheim, without doing a whole lot, they just work harder. They just worked harder than Bayern Munich. And that's what Heidenheim have done over the course of the whole season in Bundesliga. This, you mentioned rock bottom. This was close to that for Bayern Munich. I, I don't know what rock bottom is because losing to Saarbrücken wasn't exactly all that great. Being humiliated against Bayer Leverkusen felt like that was rock bottom. Losing in the manner in which they, they did last week against Dortmund ah, was awful. Uh, and the trend continues to go down and down and down and down. And it's not going to get any better anytime soon. So Bayern Munich not going to win the Bundesliga? Nope. Nine! I guess they still have a shot technically in Champions League where they're facing off against Arsenal in the quarterfinals. Jules, we know you with your Arsenal ways. Are you at all worried about facing this Bayern Munich? The only thing really is that the second leg is in, is in Munich and a bit like what Stevie was saying with Old Trafford and United and when you're home and all of that. You, this is the only thing you could say that Okay, let's see what happens at the Emirates on Tuesday night. And then the second leg in Munich, really anything could be possible, should be possible from a Bayern Munich point of view. However, these Bayern Munich side really have been bang average all season. And yeah, you can find now and again maybe some decent football. But even that, we, have, we haven't had decent football from them for a very long time. Maybe back to the towards the start of the season, the 2-2 against Leverkusen at, at, in Munich. That was maybe the best game that they've had, even more than the first, the Classica, where Dortmund were down to 10 men early, all of that. So they haven't been playing great. They don't press well. I agree with everything Ali said in terms of no team spirit, no unity in that team. Even with Tuchel, there's just nothing. There's clearly a, a, a fracture between him and his dressing room anyway. I think they, I think they should have... They should have sacked him or let him go, really, when they decided that he would not be there next season. He was, in my, in my eyes, stupid to keep him until the end of the season. It doesn't, doesn't bring you anything, really. Let's be honest here. So it was, it's been an embarrassing season pretty much from the start, really. And I, I just don't see, when you see how well this Arsenal team is playing, and yeah, of course it's possible over two legs. Anything is possible. But really, realistically, it would be very hard for them to knock out Arsenal. Jules, from a Bayern Munich perspective, you look on paper and it's, it's a bunch of good names, especially defensively, and yet they're, they're chopping and changing all the time at the back. What do you think Tuchel's looking for there? Well, it's really interesting, really, because if you go back to how this squad was built and what happened in the summer, especially January, maybe not so much, it's a difficult month. I mean, they signed Eric Dyer, which really says it all, but anyway... <laughs> 
<laughs> Tuchel wanted a number six. There were a lot of people who decided at the club who didn't think that they needed a number six, like a proper six, like a proper defensive midfielder. They thought, hey, Kimmich and Goretzka can play there. They've played there for most of their career. They're great. Why don't you trust them? Well, he doesn't trust them because defensively, they're just not good enough. And he never got that number six. Whether that was right or not, it doesn't matter. Now we see, and we've seen all season, that they could have done with some, somebody really good in that position that would actually protect the back four far more than Goretzka and Kimmich or Pavlovich or anybody else that can play in that position. And what about the right-back position? Because once you let Pavar and Stanisic go in the summer and don't replace them, and you're only left really with Basrawi, what do you expect? So... You play Kimmich, you play Lima in that position. They're not, it's not their position. They don't like playing there. And again, your defense is completely unbalanced. And if on the left-hand side, whether it's Guerrero or Alfonso Davis are not at their best, and again, when you play Eric Dyer centre-back, you can't expect to have a very strong defense. I'm sorry. So for me, the way this squad was built was completely wrong from the first place. And if on top of that, some of your key players don't play at their best, which we've seen for most of the season, then you're in trouble. Uh, Stevie, if one is the lowest and 10 is the highest, how worried are Arsenal about this Bayern Munich? What number is a healthy respect? Four? No. Five? <laughs> no, it's got to be, it, it's got to be a seven or eight for... Really? Well, it has, you have to. Just because of the name on the front of the shirt? If you treat, if you treat Bayern Munich as if they're a four out of 10, mm. then you're asking for trouble. You've, as I said, it's a health... Whatever that number of healthy respect is, that's where you hold them. Because if you, if you don't, then you're opening yourself up for mistakes, not concentrating properly, all, all, all the things that can go wrong if you're not concentrated on the job. There you have it.